Well, good morning and welcome to the show. Jeff Beals here at your service. We're brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and Cheer Athletics. This is the only show in the entire metro area that talks about subjects such as business expansion, construction, real estate development, really anything related to Omaha becoming bigger, more vibrant, and more prosperous. And now he's chomping at the bit for his introduction. So without any further ado, my co-host, a legendary real estate deal maker in the flesh, Trenton Magid. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, Jeff. Well, good morning, Trenton. And good morning, uh, Scott Voorhees on the board. Thank you very much. This is one of my uh, favorite weekends of the year. And you want to know why? Okay, you must want to know why. It is because we go to daylight savings time tonight. I love daylight savings time. In fact, I'm one of those guys that would vote for year-round nonstop daylight savings time. Getting out of work when it's light out. And that's the best part about daylight savings time. When you walk out of the Safety office kids. Monday afternoon, normally Monday evening, but daylight savings time, it's Monday afternoon. You walk out of the office, there's bright sunshine, and you know for eight months you're not going to have to put up with obnoxious darkness. So one house the legislature, national legislature, passed it, right? I beg and your pardon? I think I think with either the House or the Senate passed it, and the other one didn't. Oh, oh to try and make it permanent? You, well, I think the problem is if you have the, the one negative, if you have year round daylight savings time, um, there are certain times of the year where it would be so dark for kids going to school, like certain times of year it would get light to like after nine in the morning or something like that. But um, I don't know. I'm willing to I'm willing to sacrifice the darkness. I'd rather have the light when I come home from work than when I'm uh, getting ready to go. And in you the morning. get your uh, chores done, your honeydew list, all that. You know what else today is? What? National Meatball Day. Why do you even know that? Well, I heard him talking about it on the radio, but I want to, I want to wish my brother Tucker Magid oh. a happy National Meatball Day. And for those of you that know me intimately or, or know me well, I've called him Meatball for several decades, and it would make my heart very happy if anybody that knows Tucker Magid, either by email or by phone. To wish Tucker Maggot a happy meatball day. Let's see how many friends are listening. And uh, he's pretty easy to find. And um, it's a nice little experiment. Okay. It's never been done on this show. No, it hasn't. <laughs> and it's pro- probably a reason for it. But let's go into our news of the week, which is brought to you by Eagle Mortgage. Eagle Mortgage is... Um, You know, the master of mortgages, you could say. They've been doing it for well over 30 years. Holly Schneidewind is the owner, and she has a staff of mortgage brokers and support people that do an outstanding job. Very customer service oriented. And let's, you know, let's let's face it, it's March right now. And that's the time of year where people start to think very seriously about buying houses. It's prime time for moving coming up. And one of the first things you want to do if that might be you, is to go meet with a mortgage broker there, get an Eagle Mortgage pre-approval letter. It's kind of like a weapon and a shield all in one. So you go into what can be a competitive home buying situation if there are multiple offers. And yes, that still happens. You'll be in good shape. And it doesn't matter whether you're doing FHA, VA, conventional. They even have some of the specialty loans. But Eagle Mortgage is the place you want to do it. You can find them in person at 114th and Davenport or online at eaglemortgagecompany.com. Trenton, the big story this week was kind of our big story last week. It's just that we have more details now, and and that's the crossroads. Um, the As we reported uh, last week, the size of the project has increased dramatically, about a about a 33% increase in in cost. And, and that's exciting uh, because uh, a new uh, uh, big-time uh, development company has joined the fray as, as one of the players. A um, lot of challenges with the crossroads lately. A, a couple of years ago, you had the death of uh, Frank Krejci, who uh, was the, the driving force uh, behind the, the previous ownership group and all sorts of changes with interest rates and, and construction costs and, and everything else. So it's good to see the project is moving forward. It went before the planning board this week, and it passed um, as expected. But a couple of quick highlights that I did want to mention, and then I'm going to have you jump in and kind of give your thoughts about where we are with the project. But first of all, uh, a handful of numbers. 
Uh, in the previous proposal, the number of residences was 596. Now that has now gone up to almost 1,300 residential units, and that does include 118 condos, ownership units. Office space has wisely decreased. Originally planned 526,000 square feet, now down to 200,000 square feet. Retail space has gone up, 239,000 up to 380,000 square feet. And um, the the entertainment space remains about the same. A couple other things that are significant that came out of the planning board meeting this week. There will be a town square, so to speak, in the middle. Um, Underneath it will be a couple few layers of underground parking, so we're hiding a lot of the parking in the new project, which uh, has proven to work really well in some other mixed-use projects around the country. Around that square is where they're going to concentrate a lot of the higher-end retailers they're chasing. And the ownership group said to the planning board this week that they are at the letter of intent stage with two um, big-time national prestigious upscale restaurants. And they also said they're at the letter of intent stage uh, just near that main central square for a, um, a yet-to-be-named large entertainment business. So, so it looks like uh, this project, which I know a lot of Girl Omaha listeners are frustrated about, believe me, for the last 10 years, we get emails, why are we going on with Crossroads and all that sort of thing. But, but, it, but it looks like uh, they've got a good plan, a good team together, and it appears that the city is, is, is on board with the project. Absolutely. And you also saw that the $80 million of tax increment financing has increased to $105 million in tax increment financing. It's important to note that, according to Jorge Sotolongo and, and the minutes and everything else, is that... He, he is our colleague at NAINP Dodge and a member of the planning board. Yep, thank you. And that money is is to pay the debt service for three new parking garages that are underground. You can't imagine how expensive it is to tear down the current parking garage, but um, it sits in the corner, and that's a, a prime retail spot. And so the city will own those parking garages. You park Omaha will be just like they're doing downtown with the, um, the well, app. With, well, with, with the app, but, but d- downtown with the Mutual of Omaha Tower. <clears throat> and then also their, their Mutual Omaha's old campus, they own those parking garages at Midtown Crossing. Well, and they're going to do the, a very similar thing in that 37 Farnham building, the nine-story mixed-use building under construction appropriately at 37th and Farnham. They're kind of like, that's like the condoing out. The parking garage will be a separate condo in that building that will be owned by the city of Omaha. It's my understanding at the crossroads, it'll be a similar strategy. And the, it, yes, and, and the city can can do bonds and and. and borrow money a lot cheaper than uh, developers. So you have you have that. Um, Woodbury, uh, uh, it's like a $4 billion multi-generation, uh, more generational developer has a great reputation and they'll work with Lockwood Development and uh, Century Development. And I think you're gonna see um, something going vertical later this year. Uh, all the infrastructure, about $30 million worth of roads, the, the utilities, all that kind of stuff is is in. And and that was very complicated. Well, and that was also the infrastructure that's already in. And we saw that construction occurring last year, a lot of it over the summer and the fall. Uh, that was $30 million investment right there. So um, so it, it's it's a hell of a project. The um, Oh, interestingly enough, too, uh, we should note that the Omaha Central Library uh, which is a $150 million project slated to open in 2026 on the southwest corner of 72nd and Dodge, is being pulled into the district. And the addition of that library will allow the city to pay for its $20 million contribution to the construction with redevelopment bonds, kind of what you sort of alluded to a minute ago there, Trenton. But that's that just kind of makes it a little bit more efficient for the taxpayers. But I just want to say something and, and know that Trenton, neither Trenton nor I have a dog in this fight. We have absolutely nothing to do with that project. Um, so, so it's not like we're, you know, conflict of interest when we say this. 
I know a lot of people have been very impatient with that project, and I get it. When when you well, drive, rightfully so, it's been like fourteen or fifteen years. Yeah, when you drive by and you see something, and, and you, you want to see progress there, but sometimes there's a lot going on behind the scenes that those of us who are not involved don't understand. Yeah, I would agree with that, and and it's a it's a major change to take down that big parking garage, and some people say that's a waste or whatever, but it's just it's it's not efficient for the flow, and and uh, the property is in good hands, and so let's see where it goes. Oh, yeah, I, and I do want to address that, too. I'm glad you mentioned uh, taking down the parking garage because I think a lot of people thought, my God, that's that's so wasteful to do it. And I can understand why they wanted to keep it in the original plan because they are so expensive to build. Um, but when the new uh, owner of Woodbury came in there that's done so many of these big-time projects, like, no, it just does not make sense. It doesn't create a profitable development to have all the parking over on one little corner out of the way from everything. And I think it's interesting that, that nobody's really talking about the uh, Swanson Library at 90th and Dodge, which is another great intersection. And I, I'm not sure if the, that neighborhood uses it for other functions or uh, neighborhood meetings and things like that. But it seems to me, because that's a mile away, or actually a mile and a half, that that would be a perfect spot, and we've talked about this before, is that to do like a podi- uh, um, podium building where you put parking underneath it and do condos or something on top. Can you imagine the views from there? And it would be a modern-day Swanson library. Yeah, that'd be a great use for it, like nice five-story building there. That, to the best of my knowledge, nothing has been announced about the future of Swanson Library, but from a, an efficiency perspective, it would probably just be silly to keep that thing open and, and, and pretty wasteful. Especially when you can get on the get on public transportation and, and go right down the main corridor. And it's such, as you indicated, such a prime redevelopment uh, piece of ground. Uh, we're going to get some emails. Well, another big half yeah, from Swanson neighborhood people, don't you be talking about taking my library away. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd, I'd personally be shocked if that stays open long term. Uh, another big story that came out, uh, World Herald uh, did a nice piece on Mecca and the city of Omaha's plans to expand the convention center portion of CHI Health Center Omaha. This would be a $175 million expansion that would add 24 meeting rooms to the east side, second floor of the building. This project would be built out over the loading docks below, so I imagine it would be somewhat architecturally and engineering wise complicated Uh, but the purpose here is to make the center more viable for today's meetings currently chi center only has 16 breakout rooms when you look at the chi center um, it's square footage for flat shows trade show space downstairs very very impressive size of its ballroom on second floor great the pre-function space but apparently the problem is breakout rooms and um, the uh, Visit Omaha people were quoted in the article as saying, you know, that has changed. As a guy who you know, speaks at a ton of conferences around the country, I have noticed that uh, breakout rooms are getting a little bit smaller than they used to be. And there does seem to be more emphasis on breakouts uh, vis-a-vis general sessions than there used to be. Probably makes a lot of sense to do this. Um the, the center is really well managed financially, so I personally don't have any concerns about um, how they would handle that cost because Mecca and the city have done a great job with the CHI center to date over 20 years. But this project could break ground as early as this fall and be done in 27. Yeah, I've always been really impressed with Roger Dixon and, and his team down there. They they want to run a good show, and they also run the parks now and, and the, uh, the the downtown park, that is, and TD or uh, Charles Schwab Field. And what's interesting is uh, you, you those breakout rooms, they can put dividers in them so they mix and match it. Also, you can have a number of different concurrent uh, events there. So it's just not one big event with a bunch of breakout rooms. They can do that as well. But we're going to also attract several um, different te- users at a, at a time. And that's your news of the week, ladies and gentlemen, brought to you by Eagle Mortgage, eaglemortgagecompany.com. We're going to take our first break of the hour, and when we come back, we're going to bring on our colleague, Maddie Grave. 
from NAI NP Dodge. We're going to chat with her about some things in the commercial real estate market. It's going to be an interesting conversation. You want to hear it, so stay with us. You're listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and Cheer Athletics on News Radio 1110 KFAB. And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beal sitting next to Trent and Maggot. We're brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center with four metro area locations, taking care of both your auto body needs as well as mechanical needs. Our other sponsor is Cheer Athletics, the nation's Cadillac brand of all-star cheer gyms. Uh, the Omaha location is located in Papillion, just a little bit southwest of Highways 50 and 370. We have with us our colleague, Maddie Grave from NAI NP Dodge, one of our brokers over there. And it occurred to me uh, a few weeks ago that we haven't had Maddie on the show for a while since right after she started in the business five years ago. Maddie, welcome back. A belated return to Grow Omaha. Yes, thank you very much for having me. I always enjoy listening to the show, so I appreciate you letting me join this morning. And you've gotten mentions over the years. You and I have worked together on a number of projects, and probably most notably, uh, they're building it out right now at uh, 1416 Howard is the new home for the beloved Big, Br- Big Brothers and Big Sisters uh, local office. And uh, they're going to extensive build out. It's it's a it's a building that um, was Patrick's Market, and then it was Flywheel before Flywheel moved to the Ashton Building and changed their name. But uh, a great organization and, and, and great people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think they'll be a great use for that building, and that was really awesome deal. And excited to see what they do in that building. So, so Maddie, uh, when you started about five years ago in the business, um, you, you back back then you were pretty much fresh out of college, and um, uh, we, you, so you started the business, and and a lot has happened. Give us a little overview of your impression of the commercial real estate market in those five years. And, and what do you think has changed? What's significant? In yeah. Two minutes. <laughs> yes, that's a great question. Um, I feel like from when I started in the industry, like you had said, a little over five years ago, um, it's a pretty different market now. Um, I would say some of the biggest contributing factors to that, um, I would say one being the difference in interest rates from where it was five years ago versus today um, is probably one of the biggest contributing factors. And then you know, I would say the other is probably just the overall lack of inventory. Um, and I've kind of been seeing that from all different type property types, from industrial to retail to investment sales. Um, you know, right now I'm working on a couple of multifamily listings and have been getting a lot of interest and attraction from local buyers as well as buyers out of state and i think a good reason for that is there's just a lack of inventory especially on investment sales side of things um so that's been pretty interesting to see i think you know there's a lot of buyers out there um, especially interested in the omaha market since it is such a strong market Um, but just the overall lack of inventory i think has been the biggest change from when i started five years ago versus today very very good and when when you get calls from these from the coast or out of town buyers for these apartment complexes and, and you usually handle how, how big are these apartment complexes i've kind of done a wide variety from as small as 20 units up to 200 units but yeah there is a ton of interest from out of state groups wanting to be located in omaha and do they say why they they want to take their money and, and put it in omaha versus other markets yeah i think the biggest attraction is just the midwest market is obviously a lot different than these buyers in New York City. It's a lot different market. And I think Omaha is kind of an overlooked market for some of these out of state groups. And um, so I think just, you know, the strong market that Omaha is. Is it, and, is it higher uh, returns? Is it the, the quality of people, the tenants? Um, they want to diversify the portfolio. What, what kind of comments do you get? Yeah, I would say um, pricing is a lot more favorable. I actually yesterday was chatting with um, a gentleman from Chicago. He's going to be purchasing a property here. And, you know, he just said Chicago market looks a lot different than the Omaha market. And I think, you know, pricing is a big factor of that. And um, it's just a different tenant mix versus some of the properties that what he would be able to afford in Chicago versus in Omaha looks a lot different. Omaha, we enforce our our, our police enforce the laws. 
<laughs> well, we, well, we hope and we do encourage that. <laughs> so, so Maddie, with the with the multifamily market, which which you do quite a bit of, um, are are people investors looking for different things in in multifamily properties than they were several years ago, or has that kind of remained static? I feel like that's been pretty steady. I would say the most consistent um, feedback I get from these groups is I want value add, and that's pretty common. I say, you know, you and everyone else would love a value add opportunity. So that's just challenging of, you know, when there's a lack of inventory and everyone's kind of out after the same, the same thing. So for our listeners that aren't in commercial real estate, value add can mean a number of different things, but basically it means I want to buy a property at a discount and I can do repairs and make it worth a lot more than the cost of the repairs plus the purchase price. So it's, it, it can mean a lot of different things, but, um, it's something that's thrown around kind of loosely. All right. Well, we're going to take our middle of the show break for the news. But uh, when we come back, we'll chat more with our colleague from NAI, NP Dodge, Maddie Grave, about a few different things in the Omaha commercial real estate market. We also have your uh, Noddle Company's commercial real estate development spotlight coming up. So, so much to look forward to. Uh, you're listening to Jeff and Trenton on Grow Omaha, brought to you by Cheer Athletics and Dingman's Collision Center on News Radio 1110 KFAB. And welcome back to the show on this national media. Meatball Day, Jeff Beals and Trenton Maggot in the KFAB studio. It's Grow Omaha brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center along with Cheer Athletics. And it's time for our commercial real estate development spotlight of the week. Brought to you by Noddle Companies. Noddle Companies is building Omaha. And, you know, they're known for a lot of things. You can go see some of these headquarters buildings um, in uh, Omaha, like you know, the HDR headquarters building, the Xarban Village, the the beautiful Valmont headquarters building near 150th and West Dodge Road. You know, those are both uh, big time uh, companies, a Valmont Fortune 1000 firm, HDR, one of the top 10 architecture and engineering firms in the, in the world. Um, and, and not all companies does projects like that. They're also known for making places, places like Exarban Village and River's Edge on um, the Council Plus Riverfront and Builders District in North Downtown. And I want to talk today about Exarban Village, perhaps the the best known active Noddle Companies project, at least here in Omaha. And we're going to talk specifically about the inner rail. Got to go check it out if you haven't been there for a while. The outdoor patio improvements are now installed. It is a very different looking patio. When you, when you walk around there now where the fire pits and the chairs were, there's like pergolas covering it. Some of them have sides to kind of block the north wind a little bit. It just looks a lot more comfortable, a lot makes it easier to use the the outdoor space for a greater portion of the year. Also right there in that same kind of outdoor square outside of Interrail Food Hall on the east side of the HDR building, Lay Macaroon or Lay Macaron, Lay Macaroon, something like that. It's a French cookie place is getting really, really close to opening. I was down there just this week and looked in the window yeah, I was that guy looking in there, the, the construction workers inside. I think I scared the hell out of them. But it, it's it's coming along really nice, and that's going to be a fun addition. Big national brand coming to the Omaha area. I'm offended that you called macaroons cookies. Well, whatever they are, uh, they look good, and they're French. And that is your commercial real estate development spotlight of the week brought to you by Noddle Companies. Appreciate their support of everything we do here on Grow Omaha, and you can find out about them or learn more at noddlecompanies.com. We have our colleague Maddie Grave with us today. She's one of our brokers at NAI NP Dodge Commercial Real Estate. Maddie and I have worked uh, on several projects together, but one of them is a land development that uh, Lockwood Development is doing. Maddie, tell them about uh, what we're doing over there and where. Yes, yeah, we have um, a couple of different lots available for sale. It would be on the northwest corner of 192nd and Harrison. Um, currently, some of the users out there now, there's Centris Federal Credit Union. There's a Primrose Daycare. Um, there will be a an auto user out there. Um, so we do have, like I said, a couple of lots still available for sale. I think it would be great for coffee user, a C-store. Um, we've kind of been talking with um, a gentleman that might be doing kind of a um, multi-tenant retail strip center. So 
really could serve a wide variety of different users out there. So, um, yeah, would love to see, like I said, either coffee or C store, I think would be a great fit out there. Yeah, that's a good one. Lockwood's been doing a really good job on that project as well as others. And, um, even though we see higher interest rates, Maddie, and we see, um, construction costs high and stuff like that, people are still buying land. Um, are you, I know you do a lot of apartments, but you also do um, other things. What's your take on on the market given given those conditions I just talked about? Yeah, I think yeah, like you had said, there's still people out there buying, owners still wanting to sell. Um, I work with a lot of tenants and landlords as well on the leasing side of things, and that has been super active and busy. Um, I know, yeah, a lot of the groups that I have worked with, it's been kind of cool. Um, within the last year, when I had started about five years ago, those leases were coming up for renewal. And a lot of those tenants that some of my first clients that I had worked with had come back to me and I've outgrown the space. I need two more locations or I need a warehouse for all the inventory based off of how quickly I've grown. So um, that's very cool to see some of these smaller business in Omaha just growing and expanding. So yeah, definitely deals still happening. Along those same lines, and this is kind of a, a topic for, for both of you, um, not only are we, we still seeing a lot of things happening, like Trent, you said, people are still buying and selling, but there's just an awful lot of construction right now. And when, when I drive around most other cities, say over the last year, I don't see the level of construction usually, unless you're like maybe downtown Austin or something like that. I don't see the the level of construction there that I tend to see here. And and, and I've just been personally impressed with that because you look at these interest rates in, increasing and, and we know the cost of construction has gone up and we know there's labor shortages and we think our population is growing here pretty robust-like, but it's not necessarily booming. Um, I find that, that whole thing with all of the construction just fascinating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree. I think, yeah, there's still, um, obviously, like you said, as you drive around, see lots of different construction going up and new developments. So I think that's a great sign and part of why Omaha is such a great market and um, city for out-of-state buyers to be attracted to because of all the growth and development happening. Uh, to add on to that, Jeff, there's a, there's a few different types of projects. There is a lot of not-for-profit organizations from the new uh, adolescent mental health facility at Children's Hospital to uh, there's a couple of projects. Madonna School has a campus going on 72nd Street. Um, Community Alliance just finished, I think, is get, finishing their project over there. You have uh, the expansion of the convention center you talked about. There's a lot of um, civic projects going on. You got the streetcar going on, obviously. But you also have a lot of uh, private companies, Mutual of Omaha, and people are not afraid of, of 7% interest rates and, and they're just loving 4% interest rates. And so some of those people probably will try to refinance and stuff, but there's plenty of work out there. If, if you're in the trades and I'm sure we have plenty of travelers, people that travel to do construction. Yeah. Well, uh, well, Maddie, we appreciate you jumping in here on Gromaha with us today. And, uh, uh, Trent and I both enjoy working with you and we'll have to have you back sometime and, and we'll just kind of talk real estate, but that's our, uh, colleague from NAI, NP Dodge, Maddie Grave. Thanks for being with us. Yes, thank you guys. All right, we're going to take our final break of the hour. And when we come back, it's time for the uh, Turner Construction Lightning Round, in which we talk about a lot of things in a short period of time. And I'm looking at the list and a lot of things on it. So stay with us. You're listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and Cheer Athletics on News Radio 1110 KFAB. And welcome back to the show. It's time for the lightning round in which we talk about a lot of things in a short period of time. Thanks to Cheer Athletics and Dingman's Collision Center for sponsoring the show. I'm Jeff Beals. He's Trenton Maggot. And let's get started. Big Grove Brewery and Tap Room. Uh, tap room. Big Grove Brewery and Tap Room. Very popular a chain of uh, brewery tap rooms across the state of Iowa is coming to Omaha in 2025. They have locations in Salon, Cedar Rapids, Des Moines, and Iowa City, Iowa. And Trenton, the place they're going to open in Omaha, this is their first out-of-Iowa location, is a bit of a surprise. 
the University of Nebraska Medical Center. They're actually going to be inside the new Catalyst building on the Saddle Creek campus. That sounds like a great idea. <laughs> well, it's the Med Center's way of creating patients. And um, anyway, it's it's very, very popular. And I've yet to try Big Grove. I apologize. And I'm a beer guy, but I haven't tried it yet. But uh, I'll sometime when I'm in Iowa, I'll go give it a try before it opens in Omaha in 25. You know, it's those, those shared office spaces with, with all those creative young minds and stuff like that that feel that they need to have kegs next to their uh, ping pong tables. There is. Maybe it's, for the re- maybe it's for the researchers. Yes. Um, they can certainly do a lot of studies. With the, <laughs> I'll be part of the control group. Yeah, but you know, I will say the plan for the Catalyst building all along was to have some sort of like food court in there, and some would say beer is food. Work is coming along on a new Mediterranean concept to be known as Clio, C-L-I-O, um, that will be on the northwest corner of 12th and Howard. Yeah, 12th and Howard in the old market. This is the former Wheatfields place, yep. and it is part of Flagship Restaurant Group. Now, Flagship Restaurant Group, a lot of people have heard us mention that. Uh, That is an Omaha-based conglomerate of restaurants. And some of the brands they have that are located in Omaha are Blatt Blue, Flagship Blue Sushi, Flagship Commons at the West Roads, Memoir, the new restaurant in the Mercantile, Plank, really good seafood place in the old market, and Roja um, are ones that they currently have open in Omaha. But I looked at their website this morning. This is where, and I'll say it really fast, this is where flagship Omaha Company, they now have uh, places in Omaha, Lincoln, Des Moines, Iowa, Phoenix, Las Vegas, Denver, New Zealand, Australia, Birmingham, Alabama, Chicago, Indy, KC, Lexington, Kentucky, Cleveland, Nashville, Dallas, Houston, Austin. Wow. Omaha Company is doing pretty well. It's very it's very impressive and, and good people as well. And um, they've really obviously changed the restaurant scene in Omaha and added added to it uh their customer service is really good and i go to blue a lot i go to plank i go i go to probably all of them well i think they also have a concept called ghost donkey which i believe that's opening in the mercantile if i remember it correctly sounds delicious and and um <laughs> the um i don't know what to say to that um uh, and des moines, say something i think they have a they have a t- radio a tiki bar in des moines yeah, they do have a, a couple of concepts in Des Moines. The place where they have a lot of concepts is uh, Phoenix. They have all sorts of things there in Phoenix. I want to be on their naming team. Well, um, give them a call. So Omaha Teriyaki, not part of Flagship Restaurant Group, plans to open in a 2,000-square-foot space in Miracle Hills. It's the former Paparazzi's space, 723 North 114th Street. Our own Sam Estivo, broker at NAINP Dodge, represented the tenant um, it has the same ownership as a popular food truck known as the Best Teriyaki. That food truck is based near 72nd and L Street. Cunningham's Bub, uh, Pub and Grill. Cunningham's Pub and Grill. Second location in the Blackstone District at 3814 Farnham Street. Soft opening going on right now this weekend. And then it's all official. The big time main openings planned for Tuesday, March 12th. Five days before St. Patrick's Day. Which is on a Sunday this year. I wonder if that will dampen spirits. You know, we, we don't, I'm sure there's still some issues regarding staffing and logistics and stuff like that, but people are opening up restaurants, it seems like, at a record pace. And it, the talk was always about getting help. And you'd see all these empty tables because they couldn't get people to serve and all this kind of stuff. And I wonder if there's been a, those people have come back right now that some of the government money is washed off for some of them and, and I'm not saying that all restaurant workers took free money. I'm just saying it seems like we're more in a, a balance of, of staffing. Medida Clothing has opened at Village Point Shopping Center. It's located between Altered State and 402 Eat and Drink. This retailer is, quote, trend-driven women's clothing boutique, end quote. Also has a store in Lincoln. It's actually owned by... Two people who are former Miss Nebraska's, Miss Nebraska USA's. So they, I believe they also have a store at uh, Legacy. Um, okay. I, that, I, yeah, I did yeah, not I, know that. I meant to point that air out to you uh, on the newsletter. Thank you. Crumble Cookies is opening a Bellevue store April 5th at 10403 South 15th Street in English. That's in the Wolf Creek Plaza. It'll be located between an existing Starbucks and a Chipotle 
And staying on the cookie theme, insomnia cookies build-out is underway, or so it appears. The outside windows are covered with insomnia branding posters, uh, but that is in the Capital District, uh, 10th and, and Capital downtown, uh, popular uh, cookie concept. Viva Le Rock Lounge. Viva La Rock Lounge is coming to a retail strip center at 124th and West Center Road. It's part of the Westwood Plaza Complex. Opening this spring, uh, possibly next month in April. Uh, according to Viva La Rock's Facebook page, it is dedicated to the celebration of rock and roll and will have museum-esque experiences uh, with high-quality cocktails. It won't do live music. It'll be more of like an honor of rock and roll with like memorabilia and, and posters and displays and artwork and, and that sort of thing. Jeff, I need to apologize. Go ahead. It, it might be, I need to check, and I live by there, but Medita may not be at Legacy. I couldn't find it online, but I will report back. Um, you just want an excuse to go visit Medita. Costco at 180th, a lot of construction progress lately. This yeah, is on walls. the southeast corner. Yeah. Um, they, 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 yeah, they're really going up with the steel, but some retaining walls and things like that. What hasn't started yet is the uh, fleet farm. Oh, right. And I'm surprised by that. Well, and, and there's a local developer that's that's working on that, um, both that one and 192nd and 370. So it'll be interesting to see which one they do first or if they do them together. When I drove by the 192nd and 370 site maybe a week and a half ago, a week ago, um, it looked like, and I don't know this, but it looked like they were doing some site preparation for Fleet Farm. They were they were doing something in the middle of that development for what looks like a very large building. So I would assume it, it's that. So that leads me to believe maybe the Gretna location will end up opening before the West Maple one, which was announced a year or two prior. Uh, but we'll have to see how that all plays out. Nick's Quorum Bar and Supper Club is going to open up on March 19th inside the Hilton Omaha Hotel downtown. I actually got to a, go to a tasting preview uh, for this place recently, and it was uh, it was really good. They had the chef was in town. He's like a celebrity chef um, who's in, who's involved. And this is not just going to be some like oh restaurant has got to have you know the hotel's got to have a restaurant. This is going to be like a, a top notch place. What's it replacing? Um, it was Liberty Tavern, is what it was called, which was kind of a gen- always seemed like kind of a generic hotel restaurant to me. Is that where the fire pit was? <clears throat> yeah, the fire pit on the outside. Yeah, yeah, just just inside the window from the fire pit okay. was where Liberty Tavern was located. Good location. And that's where Nick's Quorum is going to go. Um, but yeah, like I said, the 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 food tasting thing was was really good, and I uh, can't wait to go give it a try when it opens up later this month. Well, the unicameral passed LB. 624 this week to better coordinate between Nebraska Tourism Commission and the Nebraska Department of uh, Economic Development. And the hope for it is that we will never, ever again have something as stupid as Nebraska. Honestly, it's not for everyone. I don't know who was who, what they were thinking. Well, the music's playing, so we're out of here. Hope everyone has a great week. I'm Jeff Beals. And I'm Trenton Maggot. You've been listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by Dingman's Collision Center and Cheer Athletics. We'll chat with you again next week at 9 o'clock right here on News Radio 1110 KFAB. If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media. This is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family.